Hello, today we'll look at diabetes mellitus and the diagnosis of it. So we dealt with symptoms in another video and the symptoms will, will be important for the diagnosis in one of the cases because we can diagnose diabetes mellitus based on three cases. The first case is with symptoms, as we said, polyphagia, polyuria, polydipsia, blurred vision, weight loss, and so on. These symptoms together with a random blood glucose level of more than 200 milligram per deciliter or more than 11.1 millimole per liter. If we have symptoms and a random blood glucose with these kind of values, then we have a diagnosis of diabetes mellitus. The second point is with no symptoms. Then the patient comes with no symptoms and usually most of the patient do not have any symptoms who has diabetes type 2. Diabetes type 1 has usually symptoms, type 2 not really. Therefore it's very hard to diagnose without any blood sample. So the second option is very important that we take a blood sample. We will look at fasting blood glucose level which means that the patient was fasting during the whole night and during the morning he was not eating any breakfast and we took now a blood sample when the patient was having a fasting blood glucose level and if it's more than 126 milligram per deciliter or more than 7 millimole per liter then we say it's diabetes mellitus of fasting blood, blood glucose levels. As you see, there was a difference here because we said a random blood glucose was more than 200 milligram per deciliter and fasting was more than 126. It's a bit lower. But we, we are not allowed to diagnose, patient with di to, so diagnose patient with diabetes only by using fasting plasma glucose level. When we use fasting plasma glucose, we need to add something called hemoglobin A1C. So HbA1c. And that value has to be more than 6.5%. If you have these two values together, hemoglobin A1c, more than 6.5%, and fasting plasma glucose of more than 126 milligram per deciliter, then we have a definitive diagnosis. Because the third option is something called OGTT, oral glucose tolerance test. This is the most sensitive test. This is what we use for patients who are, for example, pregnant. OGTT do not have to have another uh, value, another unit, as we had for fasting plasma glucose. So for fasting plasma glucose, you need to add hemoglobin A1c, but for OGTT, it's enough if we only have OGTT. So OGTT means we give the patient 75 gram of glucose, so sugar tablet, and after two hours, we measure the blood glucose level. And if we see that it's more than 200 milligram per deciliter, as we had, as you remember, with random one, which we said, we said that we have symptoms and random blood glucose of more than 200 milligram per deciliter. It's the same values, but the difference is here with oral glucose tolerance tests, so OGTT, that we don't have any symptoms. We only have this value. So we gave 75 gram of sugar tablet, and after two hours, we saw that the value was more than 200 milligram per deciliter, or more than 11.1 millimole per liter. Liter. Then we have a diagnosis. So three options of diagnosis. One with symptoms and two without symptoms. One with symptoms was, once again, symptoms together with a random blood glucose. That's the most convenient one because it's random. The patient does not have to fast. No fasting needed. We just take a simple blood sample randomly during the day, anytime. And if it's more than 200 milligram per deciliter or more than 11.1 together with symptoms, then we have a definitive diagnosis. What about the second option? Because that's a trickier one. For example, if we have a fasting plasma glucose of uh, uh, more than 126 milligram per deciliter, but for example, hemoglobin A1c is showing a normal value. So uh, let's say it's less than 6.5%. What do we do then? We have one test that is showing that we have diabetes and the other test is showing that we don't have diabetes. Then we repeat the test and we will see what happens then. And we usually repeat the test that was positive, meaning the fasting plasma glucose level. We repeat that. So, to conclude, we can say that all these values that I mentioned is, having, uh, is showing that we have diabetes mellitus. All values below that, for example, what happens if we have 120 milligram per deciliter of fasting plasma glucose? It's pretty high, but it's not above 126. What do we call this then? 
pre-diabetes. Pre means before. It's before diabetes. Because the normal level of fasting plasma glucose is below 100 mg per deciliter. Below 100 mg per deciliter. When we're dealing with the other unit, why do I use two different units? It's because in one country we have one unit, in the other country we have another unit, in one laboratory we have that and the other. And so there exist two types of units usually. So when I say that we have 126 mg per deciliter, that is the same as saying we have 7 millimole per liter in the other unit. So if we have less than that, well, then we're dealing with pre-diabetes. Let's look at the values now of pre-diabetes. The first test was symptoms, as we said, and more than 200 mg per deciliter or more than 11.1 millimole per liter. What if we have pre-diabetes? Then we have a random blood glucose of less than 200 and less than 11.1. And, and what is the range? We have 140 to 200, so 199. 140 to 199. And what about the millimole thing? Here we had below 11.1, yes, but what's the lower limit then? That would be then 7.8. So 7.8 around uh, that level would be similar to 140 milligram per deciliter. So 7.8 millimole per liter to 11.1 millimole, millimole per liter is pre-diabetes. Everything above 11.1 is then diabetes. When we're dealing with random blood glucose levels, that was the first option symptoms and the random. What about the second option? Here we have fasting plasma glucose levels of pre-diabetic would be 100 to 120, 125. So above 126 is diabetes, below that uh, it's pre-diabetes and below 100 it's normal. What about the millimole thing again? Here we had uh, above 7 millimole was diabetes, here we have below 7. Below 7. And we can say that the normal value of a patient with millimole is everything below 5.6. So 5.6 to 7 would be then pre-diabetes, as you see. So you need to remember some values here. When we're dealing with millimole, we usually deal with random blood glucose being more than 11.1, pre-diabetes being less than 11.1 until around 7.8. That's random. When we deal with fasting blood plasma glucose, then we would have a value of seven, more than seven diabetes and, and 5.6 to seven being pre-diabetes and less than 5.6 than normal. What about hemoglobin A1C? Here we have 6.5% more than that is diabetes. Less than that, meaning we have around 5.7% to 6.5% would be pre-diabetes. Everything below 5.7% would then be normal. And um, of course, we, if we want to complicate it even further, we said that hemoglobin A1c has also not only percent, we have also something called a millimole per mole. And if it was more than 48 millimole per mole, that was diabetes. If it's, uh, if it's 39 to 48 millimole per mole, then it's pre-diabetes. And everything below 39 millimole per mole would be then normal. And as we said, we need the fasting plasma glucose together with hemoglobin A1c to, to have the diagnosis, these together, because these together are almost as sensitive as OGTT. Therefore, we need them together. Now, uh, hemoglobin A1c is important as we know patients usually before a test, they usually start to eat very healthy, they have a good diet and so on. And during the last day and during the last week, they eat very healthy. And usually, therefore, the fasting plasma glucose will be good and the hemoglobin A1c will be bad because hemoglobin A1c is looking backwards three months whereas the fasting plasma glucose is only that day so you don't see anything before that and therefore it's important that we take both of them and the patient says yeah i'm eating healthy and so on and we take a fasting plasma glucose and there we see yeah he's good, doing pretty good here and then we take the hemoglobin a1c and we see no it's actually very bad uh, it looking it's, it looks uh, what happened during the last three months and as we know patients do not eat healthy during a three-month period. It's very hard for patients 
who are usually unhealthy to just switch and do very persistently a good diet for three months. So usually the hemoglobin A1c will be a very important sign that the patient is not doing good. So it has to be, as we said, five, uh, so less than 6.5% sh for sure, because 6.5 and above is diabetes, less is than pre-diabetes, so 5.7 to 6.5 is pre-diabetes. And the pre-diabetes, as we know, why is this important? Because pre-diabetes means that you are before diabetes. When you already have diabetes, then you have it for lifelong, then goodbye. No, I'm just joking. I'm just saying that then we need to really take medications for life, probably. Then we need to exercise a lot, diet, and these are the things that we should do before we get any disease. So when we have pre-diabetes, then we have a chance, we have opportunity. This is the last opportunity for the patient to, to, to fix it. Otherwise, he will go into diabetes and then we will get all the complications that we have with diabetes. Heart attack, stroke, death, so on. I don't want to go into that in this video, but Please remember, pre-diabetes values are very important because then we need to screen patients yearly. So please, every year, check the patient. Good. Now about the third option, OGTT. We said that we uh, took this 75 gram of tablet of sugar. Then we, in two hours time, we checked the level, levels. And if it was more than 200 milligram per deciliter or more than 11.1 millimole per liter, that was then diabetes. Then pre-diabetes would be as we had in the first option with random glucose, 140 to 199 milligram per deciliter or 7.8 to 11.1 millimole per liter, that's pre-diabetes. Everything below 7.8 millimole per liter is then normal. Everything below 140 milligram per deciliter is then normal. We're dealing with OGTT. So please, this, this is the confusing part because there are three things here. Random is very similar to the third one, OGTT. The values are the same. But the fasting plasma glucose is totally different. Here, when I say normal, then it's less than 100. By OGTT, when I say normal, then it's less than 140. With random, also when I say normal, it's less than 140. So please remember that. And then, uh, what do we have more? Yeah, this was pre-diabetes. So, if we want to conclude now, uh, we have a patient, we, um, we will look at the patient and we see no symptoms. Then what, which of these three do I choose? The second one or the third one or the first one? Which one? The first one, not, not because that was including, that was having a symptom in the criteria. So if your patient comes in with no symptoms, then exclude a random glucose tolerance. Forget a random glucose tolerance. As we know, we have a convenience, convenience and we have sensitivity. Sensitivity means how, uh, li what is the likelihood of this test, say, uh, finding out that you have a disease. That's sensitivity. And uh, if we are dealing with random blood glucose levels, the sensitivity is pretty low. And therefore, you need symptoms together with it. As you saw, we didn't have random blood glucose test level for the other ones. So we really need symptoms together. The other two tests, we don't need any symptoms because they are more sensitive. And the most sensitive one, OGTT, didn't even need another value because as we saw in the second type, we had fasting plasma glucose together with hemoglobin A1c. These together needs to be, because these together are sensitive enough as OGTT. And for pregnant women, we always use OGTT and for all other patients, we always use fasting plasma glucose and hemoglobin A1c because it's more convenient. We don't want the patient to take this really disgusting uh, 75 gram of oral glucose tablet and we don't want to wait two hours. The patient does not want to wait and the doctor does not want to wait. Therefore, convenience rules in this case because sensitivity is as high as OGTT if we do this together. So never rely on one value, rely on both the fasting plasma glucose and hemoglobin A1c. Now, most of the patient now, as we said, will have these two. So let's focus on these two, these two values. Fasting plasma glucose, Let, uh, everything above 126 milligram per deciliter or more than seven millimole per liter. 
is diabetes if we have a hemoglobin A1c of more than 6.5% or more than 48 millimole per mole. This is the only thing you need to remember. And of course, pre-diabetes. Pre-diabetes, remember, it was between 100 and 126, so 125 actually, and 100 to 125. So everything up until 126, 100 to 126 is the pre-diabetes. Everything, uh, when we deal with millimole, it's everything between 5.6 and 7. It's pre-diabetes. Everything below 5.6 is normal. Everything below 100 milligram per deciliter is normal. That's it. Hemoglobin A1c, well, let's look at the normal values and pre-diabetes and diabetes. Nor the uh, diabetes level was more than 6.5. Pre-diabetes level was 5.7. 5.7 to 6.5 and normal is then less than 5.7 less than 5.7 that's or when we deal with millimole per mole then we have everything above 48 millimole per mole is diabetes 39 to 48 millimole per mole is then pre-diabetes and everything below 39 is then normal okay if you want to remember the other two as we said it's really easy Random glucose, which was the first option, and OGTT, which was the last one. These together all, all have the same values. So more than 200 milligram per deciliter or more than 11.1 millimole per liter. Pre-diabetes then 140 to uh, 200, so 199, and then 7.8 millimole to 11.8, 11.1 millimole. That's pre-diabetes. Everything below 7.8 millimole is normal. Everything below 140 milligram per deciliter is normal by random glucose and OGTT. And I think that's it. Okay, so remember, most of the patients with diabetes mellitus do not have symptoms. So we don't usually use the first one. We usually use the second one. Uh, second one because it's the most convenient one and it's as, as sensitive as OGTT. So please, if you want to memorize values, memorize the second one. That's the most important one. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye. Take care.